Hello everyone, welcome to the daily newspaper analysis of the Shankar AS Academy brought to you by the Civil Speedia team and this current affairs video is for the date 8th of October 2024. Now let us see what are the topics for discussion. The article titled number of Indian wild asses in Gujarat up by 26 percentage by the government discusses about the importance of Indian wild ass in Gujarat and their role in environment and biodiversity and this article is from the newspaper The Hindu. The next article titled Nobel for Microrna Discovery Promising for a New Therapeutic says Indian scientist an article from the Indian Express discusses about the microRNA's role and their functionality and its importance on why it got the Nobel Prize for the 2024 in the field of medicine. And finally, the third article titled Tribal Leader Rajapa to Receive Award for Welfare Forest Conservation Work. An article from the Indian Express discusses about the tribal community called the Jenu Kurubas of Karnataka. Now, without any much further delay, let's get into the article's discussion one by one. Now, moving on to the first news, J.T. Rajapa, a tribal leader of the Jenu Kuruba tribe, has been nominated for the Hulikanu Progressive Adivasi Wildlife Award for his work, Wildlife Conservation and Tribal Welfare. He played a key role in resettling over 300 tribal families from Nagarahol and advocates for interrogating social development with conservation. So, in light of this news, let us look into the tribe Jenu Kuruba. The Jenu Kuruba tribe is a prominent indigenous group in Karnataka, mainly residing in the forest of the Western Ghats and other regions such as Nagarahol forest. Their name Jenu means honey, reflecting their traditional occupation as honey gatherers. Over the time, they have also engaged in activities like farming and working as laborers in forest area. Now, looking into their population, as of 2011 census, which is the recent census report, the Jenu Kuruba's tribe population is around 36,000 in Karnataka, though exact figures may vary due to changes in the census and development programs. Now, looking into their occupation, Historically, Jenu Kirubas are forest dwellers known for collecting honey and forest products. But with time, their occupation have diversified into agriculture, daily wage laborer and working in wildlife conservation areas, especially in protected reserves like the Nagara Hole. Now, let us move on to the government schemes for their upliftment. The Jenu Kurubas fall under the category of scheduled tribes in Karnataka. Several government schemes focus on their welfare and development. First is the Forest Rights Act of 2006. Here, it recognizes the traditional forest rights of the forest dwelling communities like the Jenu Kurubas to access and manage forest resources. Next scheme is the Pradhan Mantri Van Dan Yojana. Here, this initiative focuses on empowering the tribal communities like the Jenu Kurubas through sustainable use of forest resources like non-timber forest products that is the NTFPs and value addition of these sources. And next scheme is the tribal sub plan. Here, there is allocation of funds specially for the tribal welfare, including infrastructure, education, healthcare, and economic development. Now, let us move on to the next few government schemes. Next is the Iklavya model residential schools, where there is providing of quality education to tribal children, ensuring improved literacy rates among the Jenu Kuruba tribe. Next is the development of particularly vulnerable tribal groups, that is the PVTGs. Here, Jenu Kurubas are recognized as PVTGs, and this scheme ensures special attention to their health care, education, and livelihood through targeted programs. And finally is the National Scheduled Tribes Finance and Development Corporation. Here, it provides financial assistance for income generating activities like agriculture, forest based activities and entrepreneurship for STs including Jenu Kurubas. Now, after knowing about Jenu Kurubas, now let us move on to the MCQ related to this article. Which of the following criteria is used by the government of India to identify a tribal group as a particularly vulnerable tribal group? The 
options are pre agricultural level of technology very high population density economic backwardness and four low levels of literacy select the correct answer using the code given option a 1 3 and 4 option b 1 2 and 4 option c 2 and 4 and option d 1 2 3 4 here the right answer is option A, which is the criteria used by the government of India to identify a tribal group as PVTGs is option A, pre-agricultural level of technology, option B, economic backwardness and option 4, levels of literacy. Now, moving on to the next news. This news article discusses the increase in the population of the Indian wild ass and endangered species in Gujarat, India. The population has risen by 26.14% over the last four years as reported in the 10th wild as population estimation that is wave 2024 conducted by the Gujarat government. The current population stands almost approximately to 7000 compared to 6000 in the previous year in 2020. So in light of this article let us know about the Indian wild as. Looking into the basics, the Indian wild ass or Equus heminus khur, also known as Indian onagar that is in the language of Gujarat or khur or gund khur that is, is a subspecies of the Asiatic wild ass. The Asiatic wild ass is two types. One is Indian wild ass and next is the Tibetan wild ass. Here, it is primarily found in the Ran of Kutch, which is in the region of Gujarat, India. And apart from India, it is also found in southern Pakistan and southern eastern Iran and Afghanistan also. This animal is distinctive due to its speed and endurance and it is well adaptive to harsh or arid environment of the region. Now, moving into its size and appearance, the Indian wild ass is about 2 meters in length and it stands approximately to 1.5 meters tall. It has a sandy or light brown coat which helps it blend into its desert environment and a white belly and a face. Here it speeds up to 70 km per hour where it is known for being swift and it is one of the fastest animal. Now looking into the habitat, it inhabits the little run of Kutch and the surrounding areas including the parts of Rajasthan but its primarily range is now restricted to Gujarat. It prefers uh, flat open grassland and semi-desert areas and this was asked as a 2011 prelims question where the question talks about its habitat. A sandy saline area is the natural habitat of an Indian animal species. The animal has no predators in that area but its existence is threatened due to the destruction of its habitat. Which one of the following could be that animal? And the uh, answer was Indian wild ass. So now moving on to its conservation status. The Indian wild ass is classified as endangered by the International Union of Conservation of Nature that is the IUCN. The population had severely declined due to habitat loss, poaching and competition with livestock for grazing land. However, as noted in the recent article, recent conservation efforts, especially by the Gujarat government, have led to significant increase in their population. And looking into the conservation measures, they are protected under the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 under the Schedule 1. The Indian wild ass receives the highest level of protection under this law. And next is the Indian wild ass sanctuary in Gujarat was established to protect this species and its habitat, covering nearly up to 5000 square kilometers. Now moving on to its significance. The Indian wild ass is a symbol of resilience in the face of adverse environmental condition. Here it plays an important role in maintaining the ecological balance of its habitat by helping control vegetation and acting as a prey for predators like wolves. Now knowing about the wild ass, let us move on to the MCQ question related to it. Consider the following fauna and their IUC in status. Great Indian Bustard, Critically Endangered, Indian Wild Asses, uh, Endangered, Nilgiri Thar, Critically Endangered. Which of the above are correctly matched? Option A, 1 and 2, Option B, 2 and 3, Option C, 1 and 3 and Option D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct option is Option A, 1 and 2. The Great Indian Bustard are critically endangered and Indian wild asses are endangered. 
but nilgiri tar is not critically endangered but endangered apart from the 2011 question there were also question from 2017 on wildlife uh, on indian wild asses according to the wildlife protection act in 1972 which of the following animals cannot be hunted by any person except under some provisions provided by the law and the option is all of the above that is garial indian wild ass and wild buffalo and recently in 2018 a question was asked on a plant which is called as prosophis juliflora often which is mentioned in the news it is nothing but an invasive species where it tends to reduce the biodiversity in the area in which it grows so this invasive species or the plant is a threat to the indian wild asses so i hope uh, there's a clear understanding on the indian wild asses as there are many questions asked in the previous year prelims question Now moving on to the last article the article discusses the recognition of micro rna research awarded the 2024 nobel prize in medicine here the indian scientist highlight this breakthrough's potential for advancing therapeutics especially in personalized medicine and cancer treatment the discovery has opened doors for many research and treatment innovations now in light of this article let us see what is micro rna but before that we need to know the most basic concept there are two nucleic acids which is the dna called the deoxyribonucleic nucleic acid and rna ribonucleic acid the dna has two strands and its main function is to store and transmit the genetic information whereas the rna has one strand and the function is to it involves in protein synthesis and making and the regulation of the protein under rna only there are multiple types of rna which is messenger rna and micro rna and so on Now let us see what is micro RNA. Micro RNA are small and non-coding RNA molecules where it typically is in the length of 20 to 24 nucleotides. This is nothing but the length is known as nucleotides when it comes to any gene expression. Here they do not code for protein making. That is they do not help in making the proteins but play a crucial role in regulating gene expression. let us see what is gene expression is gene expression is a process by which the information in a gene is used to produce a functional product or a functional gene like the protein now let us see what it functions for inside the cell a dna acts as the blueprint so a specified gene is copied into the messenger rna in a process called transcription then the messenger rna travels to the ribosome that is the cell's protein making machine where it is used to build a protein through a process called translation thus gene expression has two process one is translation and one is transcription transcription is nothing but the copying of the gene to the messenger rna and that copied information is used to build a protein which is called translation so i hope the concept of gene expression is understandable now moving to the next concept here the micro rna play a key role in regulating the gene expression and let us see how the micro rnas bind to the messenger rna molecules which lead to their degradation or their destruction of the messenger rna or blocking its translation process into protein this process is called as rna interference here it is nothing but the micro or uh, micro rna helps in the silencing of the protein that is called as gene silencing by preventing the messenger rna from making proteins the micro rna help in fine tuning the amount of protein reduced by a gene thus it ensures the cells do not produce too much or too little so the work or the function of the micro rna is to silence a protein so that it helps in the regulation of any hormonal changes and so on so there is a balanced amount of protein share so altogether when it comes to the function of micro rna in gene regulation it uh, helps in the degradation of the messenger rna the inhibition of the translation process inhibition is nothing but the stopping of any process and they down regulate gene expression thus 
preventing the formation of specific protein. These all functions are available only when the microRNA bind to the complementary that is joined with a complement sequence on target messenger or the mRNA. Now, let us see why uh, microRNA is important. Now, we have known that microRNA helps in gene silencing that is stopping of making a protein, but we should know in what ways it, sh it is helping as it got a Nobel Prize. Here, it helps in the regulating role. Here, the microRNAs are fundamental in controlling what genes or which genes are active at a specific time. Therefore, it helps in playing a vital role during the normal development of a gene or during the onset of any disease in a body. Next is potential for new therapies. As research progresses, the microRNAs may revolutionize medical treatments by offering more targeted and effective therapies for previously untreatable conditions. Now, when we are knowing when and where to control an increase or decrease of a protein, it helps uh, a lot of untreatable conditions and so on, which we will be seeing soon. Now, let us see what are the applications of microRNA. When it comes to Alzheimer's disease, abnormal levels of microRNAs are linked to the neurodegenerative disease like Alzheimer and Parkinson's. Here, targeting specific microRNAs may help in the development of treatments to prevent or slow the progression of these diseases. Next, in the helping of the diabetes and the metabolic disorders. Here, certain microRNAs regulate insulin secretion and glucose metabolism. Thus, by manipulating the microRNA, we can improve insulin sensitivity and help in managing diabetics. Next is having the gene therapy. Here, correcting gene therapy disorders can be possible. Since the microRNAs regulate the gene expression, they hold a, a role when it comes to gene therapy for treating genetic disorders by targeting and modifying specific microRNAs in a pathway. Next is to have a personalized medicine such as biomarkers. It is nothing but microRNA serve as biomarkers for various diseases which helps in aiding in early diagnosis and tailored treatment. Biomarkers is nothing but examples like finding the blood pressure, body temperature or body mass index. So, by knowing about these uh, biomarkers or like certain characteristics, the micro RNAs can be used in those characteristics to find the uh, response of a body or the functioning of a body. Next is to stand as a drug response. Micro RNA profiles can predict an individual's response to a treatment which help them to have a personalized therapeutic strategies. And finally is to have a cancer research and therapy. Some micro RNAs act as tumor suppressors by silencing the genes that lead to uncontrolled cell growth. And micro RNAs can be targeted in cancer therapies to either inhibit or boost their activity depending on their role in tumor progression. So, I hope this topic is much clear and for further understanding, I suggest the aspirants to Look the video for more and more clarification of this topic. Now, let us look into an MCQ related to it. Consider the following statement regarding microRNA. MicroRNA are small non-coding RNA molecules that regulate gene expression. MicroRNAs function by directly producing protein cells. And third is they have been re researched for their potential use in cancer therapy and personalized medicine. Which of the following statements are correct? Option A 1 and 2, Option B 1 and 3, Option C 2 and 3 and Option D 1, 2 and 3. Here the correct option is Option B 1 and 3. Statement 2 is incorrect. MicroRNAs do not directly produce proteins. They regulate the expression of genes affecting the protein production. That is the opposite of this sentence. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to give a like, comment and a share. And to further not to miss any other contents, subscribe to our channel. Thank you and have a nice day.